Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. The first time we've used the webcams and we're trying to make the video with our faces in it, requested in the uh, awards show because people wanted to see Benji's shock at my hot takes. Some of them I regret now in hindsight after hearing your reasoned comments, everybody in the YouTube comments particularly, about my insanity. Some, oh, some of them I actually think I'm justified. But today we're here to talk about Mark Cavendish signing for quick step benji is the man in the ground on the ground in belgium so i assume you got told several weeks ago like how big how big benji are quick step in like the public discourse in belgium like are they really popular maybe the same way i feel like Jumbo are really really popular in the netherlands or the german fans really get behind um bora hansgrove I, I presume is that the same with the koenig I guess so. We've got basically the best Belgian team out there. Lotto Sudel is a thing. I think Lotto Sudel has the more real Belgian feeling to it because it's like more Belgians. <laughs> it's quite an obvious explanation. But regarding the Koenig, it's a very international team now, but I do feel like the Belgian aspect to it plays a role. And definitely with the likes of Adam Kuevenepoel now hitting the, the high notes and just Belgians coming to the fore throughout it, that obviously improves their reputation but yeah i think that the Koenig in general is just a team that that brings people together in belgium as well but there's also a healthy tone of people that dislike the Koenig in the sense that they're in the news so much that it becomes annoying sometimes for a lot of people we had that with tom bonin in the past where tom bonin came in the news so much that everybody you spoke to was like oh, he's in the news already but he's not making results in the years where he wasn't and as a consequence, it's yeah, it's not overly great for their reputation. But yeah, in general, I do have a feeling that in Belgium, the uh, the feeling towards the Koenig is great. The feeling towards Patrick Lefebvre, meh. I've got the feeling that a lot of people don't really like Patrick Lefebvre, mainly due to his uh, imminent angry reactions. But despite that, it's all it's all pretty fine here. Yeah, and I even found like with the Renko stuff. I was beating the Remco drum. It's what a lot of people, I guess, initially found me from all the Remco hype videos I, I made. And there were a lot <laughs> yeah. of Belgian people who would be say, oh, he's not that good, he's not all that, wait for the results. Eddie Merckx is always getting in the press, etc. So I feel like, yeah, you're right, there is a healthy maybe. That's why I ask because I sense that as well, a healthy scepticism or not like true – ardent passion whereas like the portuguese fans just are insane with their support of <laughs> almeida etc go check out the flam rouge what they've had to do with their twitter account <laughs> because of the portuguese fans but anyway back on topic i went to dinner came back about 7 p.m uh gold coast time which is where i am and i saw mark cavendish had put up an instagram post and this was classic i mean he put it up and it's a pack of wolves and so immediately we knew he was going to quick step and he'd sign there, which I, I think I'm glad about. I'm actually happy about it because if he'd gone to Ineos, I don't think it would have worked out, as in it wouldn't have given him a great chance of getting a win. If he'd gone to NTT where maybe some like maybe a smaller team would have paid him a little bit more. I assume he's on virtually nothing, minimum wage, maybe even riding for free. Uh, at quick step um i don't think for free i think you know he's got enough social media clout etc that he is worth a little bit but i thought maybe a smaller team would sign him because of that and but that would suck because he really wouldn't get the chance to get any result at all um but he's gone to quick step and if there's one team and it's a one-year deal i understand if there is one team where you can resurrect a career and get a w it is to kern quick step i mean Philip Gilbert, we've just seen this. We've just seen this play out. Phil Gil, compare his BMC results. Sorry, go and look at his results before he joined BMC. Go and look at his BMC results, which are okay, and then go and look at his De Koenig results. And then this year, I said it before this year, he wasn't going to do well. He looked a completely different rider this year compared to a quick step. He was 37 when he won Paris-Roubaix. So I... Still don't think that's going to help Cavendish too much, Benji. But do you think – I don't think a Grand Tour stage win is possible. Um, Do you agree with that or do you think there is some sort of possibility? 
I agree. And you also kind of have to look at the results he's done over the last three years. You've got the Saudi tour last year where he was a lead out. Next to that, basically nothing in in previous year, in the last like 2020 at least. 2019, nothing major really as well. I think 2018 Dubai tour was his last victory, the third stage ahead of, I think, Kittel, if my memory serves me right. So that's already like three years ago. So it is definitely going to be a goal to get at least one W in 2021. But I think it's going to be tough regarding Cron Tours because of the team surrounding him. This is a triple A AAA team and they've got options for every Grand Tour. And it's not like a place and a Grand Tour will open up just magically for Cavendish. Same thing with what he did in 2020. He was in the breakaway a lot in these cobble races. But despite that, I've got the feeling that he might not even have a chance to being in a cobble team because they've got so many options. And if they have so many options, why would you pick Cavendish over the likes of, uh, well, obviously it's not going to be replacing Osgren or the likes of a Tim de Klerk or something, but perhaps a Kaiser, but I don't think so because he's road captain. So yeah, it's really intriguing to figure out where he can be placed. And I wouldn't have a clue, genuinely. B-Tech races, that's what I keep reminding myself of. Well, he, he hasn't won in Europe in four years. So that's a long time to go from 31 years old, he's now 35. Sprinters do not win in Europe after, or do not win Grand Tour stages, sorry, after 35. Greipel did, but Greipel is the anomaly. And he's yep. a freak in his own right. Greipel has kept winning in Europe at 36, 37, and now he's 38. And obviously there was the big drop-off this year. And, yeah, Cavendish won once in 2018 in a preseason at Dubai, won then once in 2017, same race, I think. And, yeah, then 2016, yep. he did really well. At 2016, he was still made arguably the best sprinter in the world side by side with Kittel. He won four Tour de France stages in 2016 and I think came second in the World Championships yep. road race. So... It doesn't sound that long ago, but it is. Like four years is a long time in cycling, particularly when it's not like he's going from 22 years old to 26 to go from 31 to 35. And, yeah, you're right, Benji. What races will he go to? I mean, let's let's maybe look at Quickstep's roster to see. I mean, obviously Sam Bennett, people say, the best sprinter in the world. I would say definitely a top three sprinter in the world. <laughs> top sprinter. No, but top, top sprinter. Um, he's won on both Bora and Quickstep. He's obviously the big dog and he should be going to, well, even if Paul's going to go Giro, right? So that means that Quickstep will go to the yes, Tour for yes. So Quickstep going to the Tour for stage wins, which means they'll go with Alphalete, obviously. And I think they'll take Bennett as well. You have to take Bennett. So there, obviously, Cavendish, I don't even think we'll get picked for the Tour. Alvaro Hodek, or Hodge rather, is how he likes to be pronounced. He was supposed to be the next up and coming sprinter. He signed next year. I mean, I've been very critical of him this year. I thought he's underperformed a lot, um, Alvaro Hodge. But they don't have that many sprinters on the, the team, Benji, because Jakobsen's obviously had that horrific injury. So without Jakobsen, I think that's why. They've picked up Cavendish. Then it's the top dog, but do they take him to the Giro? Uh, I don't think so because, again, you want even a pole to have the fully, fully, you know, like have Honore, uh, Kaiser, Knox, etc., all around him. So is it just be like the B grade Europe Tour Belgian races that they'll send Cavendish to? Uh, like that's the only ones they'll send him, right? Like. Not even Kern, Brussels, Kern, but like what's what's some other races? Throw some other names out that he might we might see in that. Honestly, it's a difficult proposition. I don't think that replacing Jakobsen with Cavendish is a, an active thing. I don't think you think that either. I don't think anybody thinks that. Jakobsen was at the top of the crop last year, uh, well, this year, before the accident happened. And Mark Cavendish, well, he is nowhere near. So if we have to send them to a few races, it most likely won't be a Grand Tour, I'd say. I don't see an option in that, perhaps as a send-off, but why would a team like De Koenig get him a one-year contract and then give him a, a free Grand Tour spot as a send-off? I don't see it happening. So when it comes to quality, he has to prove himself in the preparation races before anything of that measure can happen. 
And looking at their team, we say it, Bennett, indeed, main sprinter at their team. Hodge, not at the level he's supposed to be. Perhaps next year he can come back to that, but it's looking very grim for him. The likes of Van Lerberg is a lead out. We've got, uh, well, Jakobsen coming back on his bike. We'll see where he can fit in. I don't know how Jakobsen is going to be after the accident. Let's hope as good as possible. And the rest, Ballerini, he was pretty decent at the Giro regarding sprints. He's going to be up there. I think these are all options that are currently better than Yeah, Cavendish. Ballerini, uh, he's, he's quality. I think me and you, I'm yep. high on Ballerini. Yep. I think he's really good. Um, and I yep. think they should take him to the Giro and use him like any else. Use Ben Swift because he can climb okay. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, on the rest of the team, yeah, there's no clear all-out sprinters anymore. But you've got riders like Steinle who can ride a sprint and perhaps would be leaning more towards a potential sprinter in the future. But even though he seems to have similar qualities for the cobble season. So it's curious. He's got an option, but why would you send Cavendish to a Grand Tour? If you send Bennett, for example, to the Tour. If you send the likes of Ballerini to the Giro. Let's say Hutch is pretty crap again next year. Then you've got the Vuelta. But why would you just not send Bennett again like this year? That's... That's what exactly. I have on my mind. And I don't see an option of Cavendish getting into a Grand Tour team next year. And the races that he could end up in would be B-Tech races. And those B-Tech races, I don't know, Holla in Hoyham, something like that. Oh, like, here's three. Here's three like of them. Brussels Cycling Classic. Uh, yep. Gurkshi Pale. Is that how you pronounce it? Gurkshi Pale. Yeah, uh, Hoekse Pale. Hoekse Pale. Druvenkurs over Asia. <laughs> however you say it. Um, so those three, I think they're all within a month of each other. I'd expect to see him at them, maybe like Britannia Classic, etc. maybe Gern, Russell Gern, oh, Dried Darksburg, the Pan. I don't know. He seemed okay actually in some like crosswindy stages this year. That's where he impressed me the most. He, he just, he cannot do hills anymore. Yep. He cannot do a hill. But I think he still is okay in the crosswinds. I think he's he's still quite he's he's just like Bonin, right? Like he think about how many times this guy's won in the Middle East. If you win that much in the Middle East, you know how to ride in the wind. So I think the races like that, he could be okay. Bing Bang, oh, like the uh, Bing Bang Tour, maybe if Bennett's not able to go because of conflicting schedule, but. Maybe he's not. Maybe we're looking at this the wrong way, Benji. Maybe Quickstep haven't signed him to, I guess, be competitive. We're picking out races where we think Cavendish might actually be able to snag a top ten, etc. Is there another reason why you think they've signed him? Is I didn't think Lefebvre was the sentimental type. I think he's the guy that wants to get something out of everyone, or something. You know, nothing's for free with him. Is it just for marketing? Because um, I don't just see him trying to do Cavendish a favor, you know, yeah, by signing. Yeah, I don't think I don't think so either. I think that they have a clear plan with him. The Le favorite doesn't do charity. He, he said that quite a few times before. Um, he can be an option to help out the team on plenty of occasions. I think, but I just don't know where Cavendish. Looks like the kind of rider that is willing to offer himself up as a domestique in this year. I feel like he's definitely going to do that whenever it's possible to perhaps have in return one opportunity or two opportunities for himself in the season. He had that at Bahrain in the Saudi Tour, like I said, with Bauhaus, where he was the lead out for Bauhaus. He did a pretty good job on two or one stage there. You made a video of it, if I recall correctly, the highest he, paid he, he, lead he out did, in the world. He did and he didn't. Like, he did, except. Through no fault of his own, he's just not designed to be a lead out man. Like yep. lead out men, perfect leader men are like Steimler, Stibar's big guy too, and then obviously Merku, Roger Kluger, etc. There are not many lead out men, apart from I don't know how tall Richese is, but most of them are big dudes. <laughs> and Cavendish is small. He was always quick because he was very aero and he had elite five second power. That's not the power profile or the size you want typically of a lead out man. So, you know, if you if you think about like Alvaro Hodge, if he, if he was sitting on Cavendish, he wouldn't be getting a fantastic draft. Couple that with the fact that we noticed a lot, Benji, 
he got into kind of good positions. I can't remember whether it was Shell de Prey or a different race. He would actually be up there, and I remember because the commentators would always be like, Cavendish, Cavendish. They'd be screaming like in the last K that, you know, Cavendish is in great position. And then maybe his legs went or something, or maybe when it started to get hairy, I remember Buani giving him, I think, a bit of a check. And Cavendish didn't want a bar of it. So, yeah, that's not helping either. Um, so I actually think his best chance is to go into breakaways in these sort of one-day smaller Belgian races. I think he can actually be be fine. If he gets some good training, good off-season, he's over this sickness, his head's right, I think he'd be fine. And I think he could surprise some people, uh, to be honest, and surprise even me in that respect. Bunch sprints against... Even like against even like Buani and um, Cockard against the Pro Conti guys, yep. I don't. He's not up there either. And um, Seneschal and Stibar and and Koa and Ballerini are quicker than him on this team too. So yeah, that's the the beauty and the curse, the blessing and the curse of the Wolfpack. You got to for these one day races, you're always going to have the opportunity to win if you're the strongest. But you're also on a team with the five other guys who are strong enough to win on their day too. Um, so yeah, that's why it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Um, but we, are you surprised that this has happened? I'm actually it kind of caught me off guard because I thought Lefebvre was just was not really going to do this. I don't know. A month ago, we had some rumors about it, and yeah. I was hyped about it because, like, I felt that at Bahrain he didn't get the send off he would need as a rider with so much on his palmarès, so much history and the fact that he's able to perhaps end his career in a more beautiful manner at the Koenig is so much better for me I I like that I genuinely like that and I don't think Lefebvre is a sentimental type but I do think that if it was anybody else he wouldn't have done it and that kind of counters each other but I think Lefebvre still ha- is of the opinion that Cavendish can offer him something and he will have a contract according to that. I don't think he's going to be overpaid at the Koenig for sure. Perhaps in the form of bonuses, potential bonuses, clauses in the contract that if he wins something like that, then he can get so much more, stuff like that. But I think the contract is going to be pretty basic that he's on, despite the fact that I think he's still very valuable when it comes to marketing, like you said at the side. But yeah... Well, yeah, we're doing a podcast. We're doing an emergency podcast on his signing. He's still a big name. And <laughs> also it adds some interest in, to the Koenig outside of their demographic, like, sorry, outside of their country. It's not like they're signing another Belgian rider. They now get the UK interest in Cavendish. Um, they already know him. He's signed with them before and won many races with them before. And I think you're right. It, it's all, if, it's, if he's on a low base, it's all or low risk and all reward because if he does win any race, if he crosses any race for the line first in any race, doesn't matter what level, the media will go nuts and they will get a good return from that quick step. So it'll be worth it if he if he does that. Um, and also maybe they want to get him in, just have a better, you know, more guys to talk to Ballerini, talk to Hodge. I think he's got stuff to offer in that respect. And I really I agree with what yep, you're saying that I think it would have been uh, – a complete shame if he had just had to exit the sport after this year. He's won 30, 30 Tour de France stages, 15 Giro stages, Milano San Remo, three Vuelta stages, 146 wins, like an obscene Palmares. And Crazy. he should be able to leave the sport, not on his own terms, but with, like, he should know, Benji, like, if, if it's not going well in. February and March, he should announce his retirement by the end of 2021 so that he can have a big send-off, so that he can go to races and they can make a big fuss with him. Like Kobe Bryant announced his retirement yep. and it was it was you know great for him. He got every city he went to, there was like a big fanfare, etc. Hopefully, you know, that's what I think Cavendish should do because if he keeps trying – and it's not working out, and he doesn't announce his retirement, he's going to have this stressful scenario once again next year. Um, and then he might not get a team, and then he might have to be like, am I really going to go and ride at pro Conti level at 36, 37 years old, or Conti level? Like, yeah, 
Yeah. I, th- I don't. So I think I hope he does is smart about it, etc. And you know he's got options too. You're Mark Cavendish. You got options after you know hanging up the pedal. How do, what, what do they say in cycling? Is there a Belgian phrase? Is there yeah. a Flemish yeah. phrase, Benji? Do you say hang up your cleats? What do you say? Hang up the bike. Hang up the, the bike. I think. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought you'd have some sort of special <laughs> phrase that like Belgians have because it's like you have. I'm afraid we're not that, that overly cultured. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my <laughs> mistake. <laughs> no. That was all we had to say about Mark Cavendish and his signing with the Koenig Quick Step. Both pretty pleased to see it. I think we're both uh, a little bit skeptical about what he might do next year. That being said, we are excited that he you know has got a new team and think he has stuff to offer off the bike as well for quick step. Um, but, yeah, let us know your comments down below. Do you think Cavendish is going to start cleaning up Tour de France stages for quick step next year or Giro stages? We'd love to hear that take. Someone, I want a hot take like that in the comments. And if he does, then that proves forevermore that the quick step effect is alive and well and you all can stop criticising me for, for bringing it up all the time. Um, but yeah, anything else? Any other news, Benji, that's going on? Any other things you had in your mind that you want to tell people? I can't remember if there's been any other big news lately in the cycling world. Not really, but perhaps a bit of an announcement. Last time we um, did our cycling awards, we forgot the time trial aspect. Like generally <laughs> forgot, I think. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a separate pod with time trial stuff, comparing different types of time trialists and prologue and so forth. So. Should be interesting, and that's probably going to be the next podcast, but I'm not overly sure, considering we've got a pretty long shortlist, so I guess you'll find out very soon. We're going to get so much hate for our, for our takes, I reckon, so that'll be You're going to get so much hate for your takes. Oh, okay, I won't bundle you in with my takes. <laughs> Other news I just remembered is Team Sunweb have become Team DSM or something. I don't know what DSM True. is, but Sunweb is like a travel company, so obviously they have stepped down from title sponsorship at Sunweb, yeah, so because of COVID, which is a shame, but I think they might still be supporting the team in some capacity or maybe not. Um, but, yeah, now it's Team DSM. They brought out their new kit, which is like a fusion of Israel Startup Nations and old Team Skies, but not that good. I kind of I don't really like it too much, uh, to be yeah, honest. it's pretty ugly. A black kit with blue stripes. Prefer their older ones to be honest. And, um, yeah, I mean, we've seen what that guy on Instagram can do, style, Twitter style design or whatever it is. You can do some pretty yep. cool stuff with kids and they don't have to look that boring. But, um, yeah, here she – yeah, it's a shame because they'll have here she, Kra Anderson and co. hopefully winning races and they'll be in that kit. Um, but maybe there aren't <laughs> actually that many other teams. Where, are there any other teams that wear black kits? Well, partially any else if you – kind of look from far away yeah but true. outside of that I, i'm not sure i can't remember too many black kits to be honest um i mean that's the point they're not that memorable <laughs> is the thing and they're not great <laughs> in the heater either, either. Yeah. um it kind of looks like israel startup nation's away strip but maybe they'll revise it i think other teams <laughs> have put out kits before got badly criticized in like the off season and tweaked it yep. pretty sure that's happened before maybe that'll happen next time um but who knows but that's all from us today hope you enjoyed it hope we uh enjoy the video edition let us know if you do it's a little bit more editing work so let us know in the youtube comments if you enjoyed it and for all the podcast listeners we appreciate your support you might have seen benji and i on twitter put out some metrics etc about how the pod has gone and it's gone really really well and uh yeah we're looking for we're going for a, a full year sponsorship deal hopefully for next year so we will announce that when it is all sorted. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's only because you guys support us so much and girls that uh, that is possible and we can keep the pod going and it's worthwhile for us. But that's all. Hope you well. Ciao.